Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. So um, I just came back from the Panasonic Lumix S series launch event in uh, Tasmania, Australia. And um, the day before I went there for the um, to the launch event, I actually shot a full day of wedding using a pair of S1 and S1R. My original plan was to talk a bit about um, the experience using these two cameras as a wedding photographer's camera in another video, which I'm still working on. But um, turns out there are actually quite a few things I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about it separately in this video. So the first thing I want to talk about is the body design and ergonomic of the cameras. Now remember the S1 and S1R, they share the same body. So um, the body design, ergonomic, everything is identical between these two cameras. The grip is very deep and comfortable. So even after I shot the full day of wedding, even with the 51.4, which is not really a light or small lens, uh, my hands still feel um, it doesn't feel tired at all after a full day of wedding. Even though this is the first wedding I shot um, using these two cameras, so I didn't have any problem at all if I need to change any setting quickly during the wedding. Uh, everything just uh, seems to be very natural and um, just very logical position. Now there is one thing though, actually, um, I want to complain about. It is the location of the power switch. Um, the power switch is located right at the top and, and like center of the camera body. So it's really not the most easiest or um, quickest position for you to switch on and switch off the camera when you want to do that. This is something I kind of noticed when I was working on the review, but at that time it didn't bother me that much because um, when you're shooting normally, um, you don't really have to turn on and turn off the camera all the time. But when I'm shooting wedding, I like to turn off the switch off the camera immediately after I, um, you know, I finish taking photos and then I will turn it on before I start taking the next photos. Now, um, compared to say the G9, the G9, the, the power switch is definitely uh, a lot easier to reach, which is right at the front of the camera. During the launch event, I actually got a chance to talk to the people from the Panasonic headquarters and um, I complained to them about the position of the switch and I told them this is definitely not the, um, the easiest position for people to turn on and turn off the camera quickly and easily. Um, they told me a long story about the decision why they do that um, and apparently they had a, a lot of discussion and debate about where, where they should place the switches. Um, I am not going to go into detail about that because that's quite a long story behind it but um, no matter what Right now, I don't really feel this is the best position to put the power switch. But apart from the power switch, all the other buttons and dials are placed in a very sensible and logical position. I actually also really like the three-way tuneable screen because um, I find that when I need to shoot from a high or low angle, the three-way tuneable screen just make it a lot easier for me to um, just shoot from a high or low angle compared to the normal uh, fully articulated screen because that one I have to like flip the screen out and then rotate it and then shoot it and then I have to rotate it again and then flip it back into that compared to the three-way tunable one, three-way tunable one is definitely a lot easier, faster to use. So the wedding I shot, the weather that day actually isn't that perfect. So um, the morning before I go to uh, start shooting wedding, I actually contact the guys from Panasonic and I tell them, hey, the weather doesn't look very well right now. It's raining. So do you guys mind if I use your camera under rain? So you will probably get wet and pretty wet. And the reply I got back is that, yep, go for it. Don't worry about it. They are really confident about the um, the weather seal on the camera, and of course, turn out they are absolutely correct. Um, while later on today, um, the weather become quite a bit better, but in the morning, um, there were definitely quite a lot of rain. So I have used the camera. Uh, I walk under the rain. I shoot quite a few photo under rain in the morning, and um, the camera absolutely no problem at all. In terms of the image quality, both the S1 and S1 now deliver excellent image quality. Um, the dynamic range is very, very good. 
the Chamblet is also very good with all the three lenses that is now available the 51.4, the 24105 f4, and the 7200 f4. They are all very sharp from the center to the edges. The colors are also very nice. Even the JPEG, um, unedited JPEG straight out of camera, the color looks very nice. And I think the Panasonic, they definitely have uh, improved their color science a lot in the last few years. Now, while I say all the three lenses are very good in terms of the image quality, but if you know me quite well, you know that I normally shoot weddings using a uh, fast prime lens. Normally, it's between f1.4 to f2. So, um, the 51.4 is perfect for me. That's a fast prime lens and with excellent image quality. But the other two lenses, especially the 24105 f4, um, it seems a little bit too slow to me because normally I like to shoot at very wide aperture to create the uh, shallow depth of field so I can have a bit of uh, foreground background separation between my subject and the background. So with the 24105 f4 lens, then that's a little bit hard to achieve that same effect. The good news is uh, Sigma is going to release almost a dozen of fast prime lens um, in the next 12 months or so. And also Panasonic is going to release a few more lenses. And of course, there are some really beautiful but also very expensive lens from Leica themselves as well. So in 6 to 12 months time, the lens selection will definitely be a lot better for the S1, S1R or any camera using the Leica L mount. The EVF on both camera is definitely fantastic. The resolution is super high and with the 120Hz uh, refresh rate, it just feels pretty much like shooting using an optical viewfinder. Of course, the electronic viewfinder gives you some benefit. For example, uh, it shows you what you see is what you get. And also when you're shooting under low light, especially with a slightly slower lens, the optical viewfinder can get pretty dim. While this is not the case with the electronic viewfinder because um, the camera will boost up the brightness for you so you can see everything very clearly. However, there's one little problem I noticed with the electronic viewfinder is that uh, when I was shooting the wedding reception, the venue, um, the lighting is quite warm, you know, a little bit yellowish. But if I have the camera turned off, then I turn on the camera and I immediately look through the electronic viewfinder. The picture I see, the white balance is a lot cooler than what I would normally expect it. And the uh, funny thing is, if I take a photo immediately, then the picture, um, I talk actually the white balance looks actually very nice it's slightly warm that is quite different to what I see in the EVF now I do have to emphasize one thing is I was using a pre-production 0 0.7 firmware when I was shooting the wedding so I kind of guessing the um, difference in the white balance between what I see on the electronic viewfinder and the final one it's just because of the unfinished pre-production firmware and while I said the electronic viewfinder is very good, and I noticed one little strange thing is, um, later on during the, the wedding, I actually start shooting a lot of photo, not using a viewfinder, but the LCD screen, I was just holding the camera like this, uh, like an amateur that just shooting using the LCD screen. And um, at first I didn't really know why I start doing that. It was just, I was just doing that um, without even thinking. But after a little while, I think I figured out the reason why I do that. Um, it's because while I love shooting photo using the electronic viewfinder or um, any kind of viewfinder, the problem when you are shooting using a viewfinder is that you only see what the, um, the camera can see. So if you are shooting photo of say um, the bride, then you would only see her in the photo. So if there's something else happen um, just outside the frame, you would not notice it at all. And um, when you are shooting wedding, normally, like quite often, a lot of interesting would happen, you know, at the same time in different places. And when you are just focusing through the viewfinder, then you will miss a lot of things. So I feel the reason why I hold the camera like that is because um, the, for mirrorless camera, there is virtually no difference between autofocus or any control between the electronic viewfinder and the LCD screen. So you are not losing anything in terms of the performance, but you got the benefit of you now, your eyes can see everything. Um, apart from the thing you're shooting, you can see everything surrounding there. So if you see something interesting, 
you notice the humidity and then you can quickly uh, point your camera to the other position. So yeah, I guess that's the reason why I uh, end up taking a lot of photo using the LCD screen instead of the electronic viewfinder. And um, I think that it's definitely a, a good thing um, because it does allow me to see a lot more thing and less chance of missing something that I really should take photo of. I guess another thing that a lot of better photographers will be really interested in is um, the autofocus performance because autofocus performance, especially when you are shooting with a uh, fast prime lens, you have a, a very shallow depth of view. So the, if you miss the focus slightly, then the photo is completely ruined. And um, I'm happy to report that the uh, autofocus performance um, especially when I'm taking photo using a single autofocus mode and the performance is very very good. The autofocus is very fast and very accurate and also um, the consistency is also very good. So overall I feel it is um, probably one of the best uh, autofocus performance um, in terms of the accuracy and speed. And also another thing is normally I would use a single point autofocus when I'm shooting wedding because that's what I used to use when I am um, shooting wedding using, using DSLR. Um, but during the wedding, um, at the beginning of the day, I start experimenting with the face or slash eye slash body uh, detection autofocus mode a little bit. Um, so I took some photos and um, the result seems to be very good. So I decided I want to switch both of my camera to the face slash eye slash body detection mode and just leave it like that to shoot pretty much the whole wedding. Uh, in that way and um, the result is also very good while the detection is not 100% accurate I would say I get maybe around 90% of the photo that um, the camera managed to just detect and set the focus correctly for me for the remaining 10% of the photos is either because the camera detect multiple people so I need to input and tell it which uh, which person is the, the subject main subject that I want to focus on and then for the remaining a few percent of photo that the camera just doesn't know where I want to focus on. Um, when that happens, I can still easily use the joystick to quickly override and just put the autofocus point on the place that I want to focus on. So yeah, um, definitely it makes it a lot easier when you are shooting wedding because you just can pay a lot less uh, attention and your time in um, just moving the autofocus point around the camera can figure out it for you at least 90% of the time. Um, so that gives me more time, more energy, more focus to just um, focus on the timing, the composition and other things that um, I otherwise would not have as much time to spend on. The only autofocus issue I noticed is that uh, there's a small percentage of photos that I was pretty sure the camera managed to detect the, um, the head or the eye correctly. But the photo I got actually, the focus was focused on the background. So I'm um, not too sure why it happened. But remember, I was using a pre-production firmware when I was doing this wedding. So um, the next day when I went to Australia, the camera got upgraded to the 1.0 firmware. And then I checked all the photos I shot during the launch event and I did didn't notice this problem anymore. In terms of the battery life, I have actually borrowed six batteries from Panasonic to shoot this wedding because I was using two cameras. So I thought probably I need two to three battery for a full day of wedding. And turns out I only use two battery per camera to shoot the whole day of wedding. So a total of four battery. Um, and that was enough for me to cover the whole day of wedding, which I took probably around 2000 photos and quite a bit of video and also another thing I want to talk about is the default setting the default um, how do you call it, the the battery power management setting on the S1 and S1R is quite conservative conservative and by by that I mean the um, camera would stand by for five minutes if you don't touch it before it would turn off itself compared to some other brand the by default, the, the settings are a lot more aggressive. I think some of them are like just 10, 15 seconds and you would turn off the camera automatically. So with the Panasonic, the default setting is definitely a lot longer. 
And remember, I was complaining about the power switch that's not very easy to um, switch on and switch off the camera. So a lot of time, I actually didn't switch off the camera at all between uh, between the different photos. So I left the camera on for uh, a large part of the day, and with that even with that the battery the two battery can still last me a whole day pretty much a whole day of waiting if i modify the the um the battery setting a little bit if i make it a little bit more aggressive if i turn on the power save power save mode power save mode can't remember the name um um just make it a little bit more aggressive in in terms of the battery uh saving management then um the battery consumption will be even better than what it was when I was shooting the wedding. And because I actually didn't switch off the camera for most of the day, so um, near the second half of the wedding, I start to feel the camera would warm up a little bit because you start feeling a, a little bit of heat um, at the near the bottom or the, the rear of the camera. Having said that, it doesn't seem to affect the performance at all. There was no sign of overheating or any weird uh, behavior from the camera. I think it just warmed up a little bit because, you know, I didn't turn off the camera. So the cameras keep on running for a very, very long time. I also shot quite a bit of video during the wedding. I set the camera to continuous autofocus with the face detection mode uh, autofocus. And um, the video quality from the both the S1 and S1 R definitely is very good as you expect from Panasonic. The, um, the video is very sharp with very nice color um, and with very less amount of uh, any kind of artifact. I would say the autofocus performance is um, probably a little bit slow, especially when I was shooting some fast moving target at uh, 1.4 with the 50 1.4 lens. It does take a little bit of time before it managed to catch up. But remember, I was using pre-production firmware when I was shooting this wedding. And another thing I guess a lot of wedding photographers would like is that it has two memory card slots. So there's one XQD and one SD card slot. So um, that allow you to have a bit of data redundancy. And not only that, Panasonic allow you to customize where or how you use the two card slots. For example, you can say um, all the raw file go to card slot one and all the JPEG go to card slot two and all the video files also go to card slot two as well. So I guess that would be quite a good thing so that you can organize how you want the photos to be uh, saved to different card slot. And also if you are a photographer slash videographer, then you can um, assign like say um, the photos go to this card and the video go to other card, etc, etc. So um, quite a bit of flexibility. That is definitely a good thing. So overall, I'm very happy with the results I got uh, from the S1 and S1R. The camera definitely feel very comfortable and also feel very solid and very professional. Both cameras provide me pretty much all the features I need as a wedding photographer. And the image quality from both cameras are definitely very impressive. Now, if I have to choose one camera between the S1 and S1R, for me, it definitely would be the S1. I don't really need 47 megapixel, 24 megapixel is definitely more than enough for me. And then I have the advantage of better high ISO performance. I have better video quality because it's doing the full frame and full sensor readout. And also the file, the smaller file size is still more than enough for me. And then a lot more manageable when I need to back up and go through a large number of photos. So here you go, here are my experience after using these two cameras to shoot a real life full day wedding um, and the things I like and don't like. So um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it below. I will try to answer all your questions as much as I can. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next video.